Hello and welcome to the Christadelphian Bible readings for the 12th of June. Our first reading will be Judges chapter 10 and chapter 11. Judges chapter 10 and 11. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamer in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel 23 years, and he died and was buried in Shamir. After him rose Jair, a Gileadite, and he judged Israel 22 years. Now he had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. They also had 30 towns, which are called Havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Canaan. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and Ashtaroths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. From that year they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for 18 years. All the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites and Gilead. Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah, against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the people of Ammon, and from the Philistines, and the Sidonians, and the Amalekites, and the Moanites, oppressed you? And you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. And the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems best to you. Only deliver us this day, we pray. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Then the people of Ammon gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, Who is the man who will begin the fight against the people of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Now, Jephthah was a Gileadite. He was a mighty man of valour, but he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begot Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore sons. And when this wife's son grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob, and worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out raiding with him. It came to pass after a time that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. And so it was when the people of Ammon made war against Israel that the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Then they said to Jephthah, Come and be our commander, that we may fight against the people of Ammon. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, did you not hate me and expel me from my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, This is why we have turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the people of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you take me back home against the people of Ammon and the Lord delivers them to me, Shall I bear you? Shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord will be a witness between us if we do not do according to your words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. And Jephthah spoke all the words before the Lord in Mizpah. Now 
Jephthah sent messengers to the king and the people of Ammon, saying, What do you have against me, that you have come to fight against me in my land? And the king of the people of Ammon answered the messenger of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt, from the Arnon as far as the Jabbok, and to the Jordan. Therefore, restore those lands peacefully. So Jethva sent again sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon and said to him, Thus says Jethva, Israel did not take away the land of Moab, nor the lands of the people of Ammon. For when Israel came up out of Egypt, they walked through the wilderness as far as the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not heed. And in like manner they sent to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained in Kadesh. And they went along through the wilderness and bypassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, came to the east side of the land of Moab and encamped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the border of Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, the king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Please, let us pass through your land into our place. But Sihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sihon gathered all his people together, encamped in Jahaz, and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel. And they defeated them. Thus Israel gained possession of all the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country. They took possession of all the territory of the Amorites, from the Arnon to the Jabbok, and from the wilderness to the Jordan. And now the Lord God of Israel has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. Should you then possess it? Will you not possess whatever Chemosh your God gives you to possess? So whatever the Lord our God takes possession of before us, we will possess. And now, are you any better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel? Did he ever fight against them? Well, Israel dwelt in Heshbon and its villages in Aror and its villages and in all the cities along the banks of Arnon for 300 years, why did you not recover them within that time? Therefore, I have not sinned against you, but you wronged me by fighting against me. May the Lord, the judge, render judgment this day between the children of Israel and the people of Ammon. However, the king of the people of Ammon did not heed the words of Jephthah. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, And he passed through Gilead and Manasseh and passed through Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he advanced toward the people of Ammon. And Jethah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the people of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. So, Jethla advanced toward the people of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands, and he defeated them from Aror as far as Mineth, twenty cities, and to Abel Keramim with a very great slaughter. Thus the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. When Jethla came to his house at Mizpah, there was his daughter coming out to meet him with timbrels and dancing, and she was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son or daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me, for I have given my word to the Lord and I cannot go back on it. So she said to him, My father, if you have given your word to the Lord, do it to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, because the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the people of Ammon. Then she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone for two months, that I may go and wander the mountains and bewail my virginity, my friends and I. So he said, Go. 
and he sent her away for two months, and she went with her friends and bewailed her virginity on the mountains. And it was so at the end of the two months that she returned to her father, and he carried out his vow with her, which he had vowed. She knew no man. And it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went four days each year to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. Isaiah chapter 36. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. Then the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh with a great army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. And he stood by the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field. And Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph, the recorder, came out to him. Then the Rabshakeh said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this in which you trust? I say you speak of having plans and power for war, but they are mere words. Now in whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Look, you are trusting in the staff of this broken reed, Egypt, on which, if a man leans, it will go into his land and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not? He whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar. Now, therefore, I urge you, give a pledge to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2000 horses. If you are able on your part to put riders on them. How then will you repel one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Have I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna and Joah said to the Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. And do not speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rabshakeh said, has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words and not to the men who sit on the wall, who will eat and drink their own waste with you? Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out with a loud voice in Hebrew and said, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you. Nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make peace with me by a present, and come out to me, and every one of you eat from his own vine, and every one from his own fig tree, and every one of you drink the waters of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any one of the gods of the nations delivered its land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are, gods, where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvim? Indeed, have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of these lands have delivered their countries from my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe and Joah the son of Asaph the recorder came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the Rabshakeh. The first epistle of Peter in chapter 2. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. 
coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offence. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a marvellous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honourable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Honour all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honour the king. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable, because of, if because of conscience toward God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth? Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return? When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree? that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls.